Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This time I'm going to show you how to complete the seventh Dark World dungeon, Turtle Rock. Before going to the dungeon, we have to do some side quests and get some upgrades. First, we're going to buy the Super Bomb, then we're going to bring it to the Golden Pyramid and upgrade our sword and bow in the Great Fairy Fountain there. We then need to get the Quake Medallion, and finally, we need to get the Ice Rod, then head to the dungeon and open it. So with all that said, let's get started. From the entrance of Misery Mire, we want to warp back to the Light World, which will conveniently place us on the steps of the Desert Palace. From here, we want to use the flute and fly to Link's house. We're not going to go in Link's house, but we are going to use a warp uh, just south of here. It's the same warp we used when we did the Swamp Palace. So go one screen south and then one screen to the west. Once on this screen, you want to take out the hammer, knock down the peg, and then lift up this rock and use the warp underneath. Link's house in the Dark World has been transformed into the Bomb Shop. And now that we have completed six of the seven Dark World dungeons, and we have six crystals, the Bomb Shop owner will sell us the Super Bomb for 100 rupees. So if you don't have 100 rupees, uh, go play some mini games and just get 100. It's very quick to get 100 in this game. Entering the Bomb Shop, you will see the Super Bomb on the left. Just walk up to it, press A to purchase. With the Super Bomb in tow, there are a couple important things to note. You cannot press A to run, because doing so will set the bomb's fuse, and jumping off of cliffs will effectively do the same thing. So you just have to walk with the bomb. You want to walk north of the bomb shop, and then where the bridge to Hyrule Castle would be in the Light World, you want to warp using the magic mirror. Once you're in the Light World, you just want to hold up on the D-pad and walk through these guards using your invincibility frames, and then back into the warp to the Dark World under the bridge. From here, walk up the stairs to this suspicious looking crack that I always thought looked like a duck doing a disco move when I was a kid. Uh, but plant the bomb there, pressing A. It will blow up the wall, and then the fairy fountain will be inside. From here, we are going to get the silver arrows, so you want to throw in your bow and arrow. This item is not needed for Turtle Rock, it's needed for the fight against Ganon, but doing this now is a lot quicker than doing it either before Ganon's tower or after Ganon's tower. You're just sort of in the area, so you may as well do it now. With the silver arrows in tow, you want to just leave the fairy fountain and then go back in to reset it. Uh, alternatively, you can just uh, kind of stand in front of the fairy fountain for a while and uh, you'll get prompted again. I think if you just press A, it'll happen. But once you have the menu open again, you want to drop in the tempered sword and then the fairy will upgrade it to the golden sword, otherwise known as the butter sword. This sword is twice as strong as a Tempered Sword, so uh, knowing that, it's going to deal some serious damage. It's eight times as strong as the original game sword, and four times as strong as the Master Sword, so this thing wrecks. Uh, from here, we want to go get the Quake Medallion. So to get that, we want to head uh, to the area where Zora's Falls would be um, in the Dark World. So uh, you want to basically take the same path you did when you were getting the flippers, um, same sort of area but you're gonna stay in the Dark World this time. So when we are near the Dark World version of the Witch's Hut, you wanna keep heading northeast, and then there's gonna be a big rock for you to lift. Go ahead and do that, and then you wanna head east another screen. From here, you wanna head south, and then bonk on these rocks, or lift up the black rock, now that you have the Titan's Mitt, and then head north to the next screen. From here, you wanna pick up any object it could be a bush, a rock, or even the signpost on the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, and then you want to throw it into uh, this ring of stones. Doing so will wake up whatever kind of fish this is, and uh, he will give you the Quake Medallion if you let him go back to sleep. So the Quake Medallion uh, is your key to opening Turtle Rock. It also stuns any enemies uh, that it hits on the screen when you use it. From here, we want to warp back to the light world, and then you want to use the flute and fly to point number eight in the bottom left corner. And we're gonna head to a cave down here uh, that has the ice rod. You do need at least one bomb to open this wall. So head all the way over here and then bomb this suspicious looking crack in the wall. And then that blows up, reveals a cave, go inside and you can get the ice rod. Uh, on the other side of this cave through the other entrance, there is a, kind of a mini fairy fountain so you can uh, just pick up a fairy in case you need. But with the ice rod in tow, it's time to actually head to the dungeon. So you want to exit the cave 
and then play the flute and head to Death Mountain. So once the duck picks you up, go to warp point number one, and you want to head up towards uh, where you would start making your way towards the Tower of Hera, but we're going to take an alternate path. There's a couple ways to do this. You can either just go to the Tower of Hera and then keep walking uh, to the east and cross a bridge and, and go to that uh, sort of area up there. Uh, we're going to get there a bit quicker uh, using this uh, pathway over here. There's a cave that you can go into, and you just walk through two rooms and it brings you to the top of the mountain immediately, so it's a little bit faster. So it's this cave entrance all the way over here in the bottom right corner. Right here. All right, so once you're here, you want to go up this staircase. Be careful not to fall in the pit on the right. Uh, that'll drop you down below. You don't want to do that. I'm going to kill these mini Moldorms and then uh, exit, and you're now at the top of the mountain. Just like that. Super fast. There is a fairy under this pile of rocks, so we'll go ahead and grab that, but I think we're going to take some damage. Yep. Like clockwork, it always happens. So on this screen, we need to lift up the black and green stone and then start knocking down the pegs in a particular order in order to reveal a warp point. In the Game Boy Advance version of this game, uh, if you activate this warp point and then use it once and then go back to the light world, you will be given a ninth warp point when you use the flute to this particular area. Only available in the Game Boy Advance version. I really wish it was in the SNES version because it would allow you to get pretty much anywhere in the world a lot faster, especially if you have to kind of go back to this area for any reason. It was a great idea to add it. Uh, once you're on top of Turtle Rock, you want to use the Quake Medallion on the pedestal. That will give you the entrance, and then you can head on in. Once you are inside the dungeon, you want to take out the Cane of Samaria, and then you want to use it on this question mark here to build a platform, pick up the Magic Decanter, and then ride the platform to the north. Make a platform here, and then ride this to the east, and then north, and then stop at this second doorway. From here, we're gonna have to do a couple things. We're gonna put a platform down, then we're gonna light all four torches, but you have to make it back to the platform and go through the door uh, to the north before time runs out, before the torches start to go out. So the easiest way to do that is to hook shot onto one of the torches, take an intentional fall, and then just walk through. That's the quickest way to do it. Otherwise, you might have a hard time um, making it back to the door in time. All right, so you want to avoid these uh, ro spiked rolling pins and then open up the chest on the right to get you a small key. I think the chest on the left is, uh, is the map. It's been a long time since I opened that chest. Uh, from here... To get back down, if you have the cape, you can use that to just kind of hide yourself. Uh, but otherwise, you just want to take it slow. Now, the cane of Burna will also allow you to just travel uh, through those pins without taking any damage. Be sure to fill up your magic uh, once again using that decanter under the pot. And then place a platform here and then ride it to the northwest corner. Now, you can use your small key on this door. And inside are these pokey kind of enemies. Uh, I recommend just charging up your sword, and then if you can manage to hit it twice with your spin slash, it'll die. When you kill the head, you'll get a small key, and then you have to go into this room with the chain chomps. These guys are really deadly. They take like four hearts a piece, even with the blue mail. They are really, really strong, so you got to be very careful with them. Uh, one tip, you can uh, give yourself invincibility frames by using the boomerang on a crystal switch, or rather hitting a crystal switch while you're standing on the... Uh, tiles that will move up. So uh, that's a neat little trick to get around some enemies. Um, but you want to push that brick in the bottom left corner to reveal a chest and then get the small key and use it to open the door and head downstairs. So it took me until 2020 to realize that this is a Mario themed dungeon. There are pipes, you're in a turtle, uh, there's lava. It's very clearly a Mario themed dungeon. I don't know why it took me almost 30 years to realize this and I feel like a moron considering I used to speed run this game, but this is a Mario themed dungeon. In this room here, you wanna take the bottom pipe or the pipe on the right and then follow that path and then hit this crystal switch and you wanna kill the pokey enemy in here. Uh, be careful of the pinwheel. We're gonna get transformed into a bunny. It's not a big deal. You can either wait it out or just take an intentional hit and uh, He'll transform back, but you want to kill this enemy, and it's going to give you uh, a small key again. 
the pokies can drop a lot of things. So uh, if you can manage to just hit it like individually, like just slash it once, let the piece fly off, hit it again, let that fly off, you'll get four drops. Um, so follow that pipe to get the big key and then head back the way you came. The drops from the pokies can be a, an eight pack of bombs, just like you saw, it can be a fairy, a heart, uh, full magic refill can really almost be anything in the game. So uh, if you're running low on stuff, just kill those slowly, and chances are you'll get some good refills. All right, so heading back to the first pipe we went into, you want to now head into the second pipe. And then from here, you want to go south. You want to kill the two pokies in here. Just like that. Yeah, see, 10 arrows, 20 rupees, a fairy. It's great stuff. Head into the south door. And then you want to take out the bombs, go left, and then bomb this crack in the wall. And what I'm going to do here is something that I normally never do, but because this is so deep in the dungeon, and chances are you're like me, you 100% these games, you are you might be missing a heart piece at this point. And the way you get it is by standing here and warping to the light world. And you will now be able to get to this platform that you could not get in any other way. Once you're in here, you want to kill the four mimics. You can shoot arrows uh, over the railing, but uh, otherwise you can just hit them with your sword and make quick work of them. Knock down the peg and then open this chest for a heart piece. Normally, I do not show how to get like additional heart pieces or you know big upgrades that aren't necessarily necessary, um, but I just feel that it's a Turtle Rock walkthrough, and the only way to get that heart piece is through Turtle Rock. Uh, and there's, I feel like I'd be cheating you if I didn't tell you how to get it. So that's how you get it. Once you're back in the dungeon, you want to open the chest for the mirror shield. This will allow you to block beams uh, coming from those eyelid enemies that are in the wall. So very, very big upgrade. Using the big key, you can open this door now and head into the final pipe in this big pipe room. Exit. And then you can just run into this wall here or use a bomb to open it. And then from here, you want to use or get some invincibility frames uh, from the switches, or the tiles rather, from the switch, open the chest for a key, hit the crystal switch one more time, and then head downstairs using the key. We're gonna go into a very dark room. You need to follow a specific path, uh, two specific paths actually. So you wanna go down, sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> you wanna go down the first time, follow this path, and then go down the second time. Lift up this pot and hit the switch. You do not need to place a block on it, so hit once. Go up, right, down, left, left again, and then you'll go to the end. Uh, feel free to repeat that, you know, play that back in slow-mo. Uh, unfortunately, without the use of an emulator, I can't light up that room. Uh, but once you're here, you wanna go all the way south, and then go all the way south again, and the only guarded chest is the one that we need to open, because it contains a key. So go ahead and kill this enemy, and then you can uh, walk sideways, using your charged sword to block that sideways. And then do the same thing to go back. Then just walk up a little bit to get out of aggro range and then run all the way back up. All right. I always fall in that hole. It's, I don't know how I always manage to do that, but I do. Using the key, you can go to this last big room. Uh, if you have the red boomerang at this stage, uh, it's very handy because uh, like these crystal switches, you gotta be kind of far away from them uh, when you need to hit them. So if you have uh, magic powder, use it to transform the bad fairies. Uh, you know, really, really helpful to do that. They turn into regular fairies. All right, so go ahead and kill that. Refill your magic, although there's another magic refill in the next room. But head downstairs and then create a platform here. And don't forget to refill your magic meter after you do so. There's a magic pickup right there, as well as a heart. And then take this final platform to the boss, which is Trinex. Trinex, uh, like the name implies, has three heads or three necks. There's a red one and a blue one. The red one you want to hit with the ice rod and then slash with the butter sword three times to kill that head. And while it's blowing up, you cannot access the pause menu. So uh, just pause, take out the fire rod, and then uh, hit the ice head three times to kill that. The boss will uh, somehow blow up its entire shell a thousand times and live. Uh, but then a snake comes out similar to Moldorm, although this is a lot easier. Uh, and you just need to hit the middle of it. It's the flashing ball. 
You gotta hit that three times with the Butter Sword, and the boss dies. Like I mentioned, uh, you cannot pause while the heads are exploding. So what you are better off doing is shooting the ice rod, pausing, bringing out the fire rod, hitting the ice head or the fire head three times, and then while that's exploding, just go right over to the ice head, hit it with the fire rod since you already have it out, and then kill that one. Um, if you wait too long, each head can put out a trail of either fire or ice. The fire goes away, but the ice does not. The ice trails transform the floor into an ice skating rink and make this fight a lot harder than it needs to be. So be sure to kill the heads very quickly. But that's it. That's Turtle Rock. That is effectively the last uh, dungeon in the Dark World before Ganon's Tower. This is the seventh and final crystal. And from here, it's just the end game. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. You can also join the community Discord server. The link for that is in the video description below. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.